Lesman present. Uh, the town administrator is present. I have Mr. Lee Martell reporting for the citizens of Dunbar. I have the town clerk here. I have the uh, town moderator here. I have the road agent here. I have a former selectman here. Welcome, everybody. All right, gentlemen, I have two sets of minutes. One we delayed last time, I believe. So I can be the minutes from the second and the ninth. I'll make a motion to approve the March 2nd, 2023, the minutes as amended. I'll second that, just as you were not intending. Do you have a stand, of course? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 9th, 2023 as amended. I'll second those. I'm abstain. I'm in here. And as amended. Again, I, I Lane, continue to uh, appreciate the good work of the uh, Ripley County Secretary. I'm very happy with her. to approve the non-public meeting minutes of March 9th, 2023. I'll second that. I'll stay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just to let you know what we just did before the meeting started, we hired a um, new police officer from the town to fulfill one of our two vacancies. He's going to work for a couple weeks before he goes to academy, then he goes to academy, he'll be returning in the fall, and to the grade of the academy, I'm, I'm very optimistic. December, so full time as a patrol officer. He'll have to do a few little more road work when he gets here, but uh, the academy is the next step for him. That thing you know, gets processed a little bit, there's a little uh, two one one on one time with an officer on the All right, uh, I'm going to start a couple comment now. Are we back or up? Bob, anything? No? Okay. Uh, town officials, you're all on the agenda. Uh, I'm not on the agenda. I didn't come announce. Okay. You want me to insert now or you want me to wait? I can insert now. It's just a couple general statements. Okay. First, I just want to give kudos to my plow crew. Last storm, they were excellent. I think they did a great job of all through the wall. There's some pretty good obstacles. The one point grapevine road, there was a tree across it for a significant amount of time. So that route, they could only go down the Teddy Road, they had to come up, go all the way down 13 to Page Road and come in from the other end. Which has a considerable amount of time on that. Also, with bad weather and everything else, is a pain in the butt. Um, Mansion Road, there were some similar issues over there where they couldn't get all the way through, so we had to come around, go up the hill, and come back, back and forth. So they all worked very hard, diligently, to get the job done. And I, I think they did a great job. And I thought we did. Not everybody was probably happy and didn't get things exactly when they wanted, but overall. Uh, what we have to work with a small crew. I think we did a great job. Chief Wiggins did a great job keeping yes. the holes clear too. Thank you. No, and that's he's easy. included the whole thing. Yeah. There were several roads that, you know, John especially, myself and uh, Pete, we had to actually cut trees so we could follow the road. The ones that weren't dangerous were cut. Okay. The wires that they wanted to do to handle. But it was, it was a pain, you know, but we survived it. We're going past the snow. And the other thing is, it ties into that. Having said that, Dirt roads were not frozen, the gravel roads, and we made a mess of it. There's no way around it. And the next few days, they're going to be muddy. They're going to be soft. We've got melting snow and everything else. We're going to do the best we can to keep them in as good a shape as we can, but it's just going to take some time. Okay. Then we dry out stuff, so we probably get new ones, phone calls. It's not that we're ignoring them or not attending to them, but at some point, there's only so much you can do. But they really, <coughs> Also, it's hard on everybody's equipment as you dig in into the ground. Into the ground. Yep. It's, it's not a good scenario all the way around. But we'll get by it. We'll fix them up. And okay. Before morning, it'll be spring. Well, not spring, summer. And, uh, it'll be dusty. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next thing. And that's all I got. Just that. And to put the record, congratulations on your reelection. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Another three more years to serve. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Jeff, I just want to say, you know, thank the. I would admire all you guys for doing a good job for the town. I don't think a lot of people realize that are in their homes that don't do the plowing of the roads. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're down a road and you can just barely get to the other end, turn around, come back, and there's another four or five inches on the end of the, end of the road by the time you get back to it. Just a, it's a, uh, usually 
long, long process when you're doing it for 24 hours and you can't keep up with it. It's, uh, oh, I, I snow blew in my driveway three times that day and my better half still got, couldn't get up the driveway after the election. Well, that's the other thing, too, is, is a, a lot of stress level because you have all these different things going. If it's just a snowstorm, sometimes you just have that or, or a few trees down, but everything came together. It was heavy, wet snow and kept coming. So, like I said, they, they were really did a great job. Was back to we were about 20% remaining of people who were still on, under the weather with Yeah, no, I didn't know there were a lot of people still out of it. Yeah. This morning was about 50%. Yeah, there was a lot of you know, electric company and your leading contractors in town. There were a lot of them around all the roads, so they clearly got it taken care of. Well, thank you for what you did and just you know, pass on our thank yous to your crew. Yeah, no, no, that's all I needed. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Can I try to bring it back to the board? We're going to go right into town business, and I'm going to start off with town clerk. Town yeah. Let's tell me the results first. Oh, the results, yes. The good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The really good stuff. Yeah. I got one more vote, and Jeff might understand. I made Dan and Dave happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, again, uncontested uh, positions. All the people that were there basically were voted in. I think there was only one write-in that was uh, Alicia Cunning for the school uh, school clerk for a three-year term, and she won by a whopping 13 votes. So, again, and obviously the uh, zoning article passed uh, significantly by seven, 71 in favor versus 28 opposed to the, the change in the article. So, thank you very much for all your assistance. Just to let you know, <coughs> so this morning at 9.06, I got a voicemail message from the Attorney General's office. So uh, they, they had received a call from a Dunbarton resident that was told that the town meeting could not be moved because we are not an SB2 town. So that the purpose of his call was to inform me that the meeting could have been moved according to the, because of the RSA. So unfortunately, I was in a, in a meeting I did return this call, and I did indicate to him, I said, the, all the election officials were well aware that we're not an SB2 town, and the decision had been made to continue with the, the elections and the town meeting that particular day. Yeah, I was a, I was fully informed that you knew that you had the authority to move, cancel, and postpone as you see fit. Correct, yep. So I, I made him aware of that, that all the election officials knew that was the case. My second question was, who told them? The old phone trip, you know? Right. Oh yeah, well, he told me, he told me so. So, and I said, and my last message to him was, if he has any need to, for further discussion, please feel free to, to reach out to me. So, again, I wanted to let you gentlemen know that I got a phone call. Yep. I got a phone call. Similar? Same. I, I had, uh, transcript made of the, the message so I got it straight but yeah it was same as John now. And what was the state they just want to make sure that we had our act together? Yeah, somebody, yeah. 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 Okay. As soon as someone calls they, they have to pursue that. That okay. is their job. Investigate it. Okay. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. So so my point is I just want we all need to be on the same page and be distributing the same information. No, it's, not, it's not because we're we're not an SB two town. Even an SB two town could cancel their, you know. So it, it's kind of insulting whoever told her that, you know. And, and, and my concern is that she called town hall, and you know our own people don't know it. Yeah, we're you know, right. yeah, we're you know, you guys are a bunch of idiots. We were pretty well closed up here too, so yeah. Well, we haven't heard, I haven't heard anybody say anything about SB two in the town. Yeah, I think it's been the last time I heard that term was maybe. Five, six years ago when it was brought up that it was turned down by the town? Right. Was it could have been somebody not even connected with the town? Oh yeah, it could have been a friend Sally from uh, yeah, absolutely oh yeah. You saw the shoe when we told her that. Yeah. Well, my, my message said a town official. Uh, so I did get a call from one resident that said that uh, he had heard that the um, town meeting was canceled, uh, but the voting had still gone on and I reassured him through text that both were still going on and nothing had canceled at all. Mm -hmm. um, they chose not to come up anyway, but that was on their own decision at that point. Yeah. Can I just speak on that? Because I, I heard of some of the, the calls coming through, but I think what people were looking at was your office was closed on the red bar and the home website.
site saying yeah, that it could be what they from. saw. And I think that they were, that's the only thing, because I was looking all over the website to try to see where the, what they would have been seeing, reading, and I couldn't make anything out. I think you're right. I and think they the might have seen that the office well, tried to move that. That was the, the 15th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think they just maybe saw Dunbarton School closed or Dunbarton Town Office closed because you closed part way through the day, right? Right, because there was no electricity up here. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. So, so this office was open for a while, Correct. at least. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and I did go on just to double check because Lean said I didn't see it. So I went on uh, WMUR. And they still have their list of who they posted as postponing the election and or the meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. Dunbarton is not on that list. So I think that the resident who contacted you perhaps saw Dunbarton connected with something else. Yeah, school or something. School or, yep. or something. So yeah, again, it just, you know, I think it went well. Nobody else knowing. But again, you can just, I guess a lesson learned and maybe, you know, should it occur next year? No. Well, no. But again, you can't, you know, some people just get it in their mind and they... It only happens on years that I get elected. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> well, this is the last term. I know it is. Well, the thing is, remember the weather said 8 to 12, yeah. not, oh, not 12 oh, to 24. Oh, yeah. I was going to yeah. say, based on the information that was mm -hmm. given and you planned on it, it wasn't a bad decision. Yeah. Well, if you look at the storm the week before, it was a lot less than what they had said, so... If you do so, postpone it, how much time do you have to... A certain number of days or hours before the actual meeting, or what? Yeah, so that the, the meeting itself was uh, 12 hours, or excuse me, would have had to have been 6 o'clock for the meeting to go forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. so that's a pretty significant amount of time. Yeah. yeah. You had to make that decision then. Yeah. yeah. So. You had to call it one way or the other the day before. Correct. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, based yeah. on the information, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the residents in Dunbarton are pretty hardy. And yeah, the thing is, I, I would have recommended. Uh, postponing it if there was something, anything controversial on a ballot. Absolutely. Or contested Correct. elections, uh, numerous contested elections, or a major bond we're going to vote on, mm -hmm. and yep. it would hurt some people's pocketbooks I, or wallets, I, I would recommend it appropriately. Yep. But the thing is, there was, um, as some people always said, why am I voting? There's no there's no opposition to anyone on this ballot. There's, it was a boring ballot. <laughs> yeah. in, in, you know, I did not use that as a factor, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, we can only advise you. Once you make a decision, we support you. Yeah, and, and like I said, if there is a need for for me to attend and have this little discussion with the resident, feel free to, to reach out to me and we'll have it. Yeah, by the way, that uh, one resident who came in late, uh, he needed a little more explain personal explanations. Yes. Yeah. I took my time, yep. and explained everything to her. She felt very, I, I felt she left more comfortable. Yep. She didn't realize that the police department is part of my budget. <laughs> She said, I fully support the police, and that's part of my budget, too. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I, I explained to her the, the three main driving factors which drove up the budget. I explained to them all. One of them was we voted on last year. Another yeah. one was uh, maintenance for our three buildings and uh, the environmental impact of our gasoline uh, uh, pumping station. And then lastly, a small amount was made for uh, material supplies, compensation, insurance, electricity, and even removing Realistically, once you've taken it, applied the surplus, which we did, of 358000 the balance on the increase is pretty much the road bond, which would have been part of a warrant article anyway. So, yeah, the roads went into our budget still on that. It looked great. Yeah. It was our plan, actually, yeah. for the most part of the overall. Yeah. And a lot, of people, a lot of people don't realize that, that every year we vote on her grant, I don't know put them to the uh, on, on warrant. Well, this year there was no hundred grand. It was in my side, the uh, the bond yeah, package. Yeah, you're the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, when you put, if I didn't have that bond I had to pay for, uh, my budget would have been like seven percent. You know, versus fourteen percent high. You know. Okay, but but overall, thank you for uh, doing a good job. Just, this part right now, just, just so we're all on the same page. And I think I'm that much. Right. Right. So the, the voting in the town meeting went well. That's all really well. Thirty-six voters at the meeting. Without including 
that include everybody who voted. That was, that's this from the supervisors of the checklist. They always, anybody who got the purple voting card, there, there were 36. There were 67 at the school meeting where, they, of course, they have an even bigger budget. Yeah. Oh, they get snowed that day, didn't it? No, no. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your coming and just sharing the yeah. information with us. And uh, yeah. I, I, social media had some. Uh, oh, um, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, I, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's but it means that it's not worth it. Well. Uh, well, I tell you, it's. Uh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. If you want to have a laugh, if you want to have a laugh, go read some of them. Oh, no, sorry, no, I don't even. Yeah, I don't even want to waste my time. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to continue on, gentlemen. Appointments of duties for next next term. I asked Liam to make up a little checklist for us so we could move on to that. Okay. Why don't we um, announce whether to make a motion on all our points after we I absolutely after we discuss it hash out. Mike has stated uh, just a little earlier, I asked about Front, and uh, he has to stay as chairman for one more year. It's his final year. And if I, I don't, unless I run again. But even if you do run, you're not going to be chair again. That's correct. little horse trading going on. Yeah. So, um, it's on record now. I think we're going to check that off here as, uh, as a go. Same. I'll stay the co-chair unless Justin would like to do it. I'll do it too. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, yeah. Justin becomes co-chair. Justin. I'll stay playing a little. Yeah. Now, I've been to ex officio. There was one controversy on uh, what's right road. That's still in place. I think it's still okay. okay. Okay, highway safety. I'll stay there. Okay. Joint loss, no appointment needed, but Justin, you've been doing a great job there. Yeah, I'll keep you on there, Justin. Come on. <laughs> I'll yeah. stay on the Town Hall Restoration Committee to finish that up. Okay. Tiff Gall, stay on. All right. Looks like it's her chair now. Yeah. Town Force Rep, I'll stay there to kind of get our tree done. I'm, I'm okay with that. Thing. We need four times a year. Police department, like you said, you'd like to be Yeah, I'd like to be the police department rep. Okay. Town offices, any? Yeah, any on that one. Okay. Highway department, is any of us? Okay. Transfer station rep with me? I can do it if you want. Well, that's fine. Okay. Patrick is for Clark's uh, regional yeah, race. Yeah, that's the Energy Committee, Mike has been doing a great job. I think they, we have to uh, share the experience. I'm they, not sure they're going to like me. Oh, they will. I'll make sure they will. Okay. All right. I'm they, not sure that's going to be good. Yeah. I'm going to tell know, them what I really the, think. The good thing, Dave, is they do a lot of Zoom meetings. Yeah, it's all Zoom. Oh, that's going to be great. I'll be Zoom room. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get my picture up on Zoom. Too big for the screen. You got to get a wide screen. Okay. Capital improvement plan. I don't think I did anything this past year on that, except read read some of the stuff. Yeah, well, we just started the whole process. It's just on. Dave's doing it. You want to stay on there, Dave? Yeah, I think Dave should finish. finish we started. He's gonna finish it. Yeah. 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 And just for the record, um, we all we always the planning board. We kept Justin on it for the public's record because. Play board is uh, meets once a month, and it takes uh, almost a year to learn what the heck is going on. Yeah, board. I have one. So that's uh, that's what he's doing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can remember when we put like committee or I don't think we changed too awful much. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please, please and transfer. I know you're ready to do some graphs for me. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Chart. Second full work policy. We were we've been bantering that back and forth, and I think it's what I want tonight. No decisions tonight, but I want to get some 
ideas, some bullet ideas, if you have any, or we can defer it one more week. Uh, I understand we asked some members of the board has to have a little more time to think some things over, but uh, I threw out some bullet points about two weeks ago. Uh, I'm willing to defer, but the thing is, one thing we can, we can talk about now is uh, we're talking about town entities and do we charge a usage fee? Do we have a non refundable deposit? Do we have a non refundable deposit? I've been, I've been at one extreme, I've been at the other extreme, and I've come to the middle a little bit. And I've listened to uh, some members of the, renovate, uh, the renovation committee, and I've talked to them at town uh, at the uh, election, and I've, I've been here, Dave didn't turn my ear off, and so, uh, in one position, so I've, I've come to the middle. The thing is, I view this as an investment, uh, and it would put a big investment of, of people's tax dollars in this building. I want it to be used by the town. However, the thing is, I was thinking maybe we should charge something as a usage fee. Well, Dave was being con being the opposite to me, saying a lot of 401Cs don't have money that you can just, if you need it, they can dish out 501C. 501C. And they can dish out money. So I see that. But um, I say, as a minimum, if we don't have a usage fee, they got to at least have a deposit for against damages and cleaning, where they give us a deposit and they leave it to a point where lien has got to get a crew up there to clean it up before the next person uses it, taking out trash, sweeping floors, they leave it, just, the toilets are overflowing, or whatever. They're gonna lose some of their, they're gonna lose some of their deposit. That was, uh, I, I think, uh, if you're gonna have a fee, no, if you don't wanna have a, a non-refundable fee, at least have a deposit where they can get it back if they leave it in the condition they accept it for use. And if they leave it in, Bad use or like disrepair, they're going to be responsible for that. And so I was, Justin, what do you think about that? Uh, I, I was always all set to charge, like maybe a, depending upon how size, have two sizes, small and um, small and large. A large group you pay one fee, non, -ref non refundable, and a small group pay non refundable. But I'm too, I, I hear Dave a little bit because it is a town property, it belongs to the citizens. And it's not a money making operation, but I don't want to see that investment be spoiled by a few crappy. Committees to get up there and they don't respect it, so they lose their deposit and may not come to be invited back. I'll leave it up to the chair. Well, I think you, you guys are already, or whoever made the second floor use policy, already hit that. It was a lead draft. Only so those are people's ideas. Our job is to finalize. I'm going to read it. Okay. Thing. If you don't remember what it says, it says exceptions can occur and will be handled on an as needed. Basis. Large parties, more than 50 anticipated participants, will need to pay a security deposit as well as a non refundable custodial fee. Yeah, that's, that's where I was so on. That's what's in it. Um, yeah. Or on the draft. Yep. Dave, you want to talk to that? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this is my thought. Bend Admission is part of the town building now. That addition was done by the voters of the town, not by this board or any other board. It was accepted by all of the voters to become down town property. Uh, if somebody wanted to come and use this room, we don't charge them anything if it was allowed use. A lot of these same boards that are in this room will be using that up there as well. All the all the people that we've allowed to use that building up there on the second floor right now by this policy are Town of Dunbarton residents and or Town of Dunbarton entities. In other words, there's a benefit to the town, whether it's for the kids on Boys Club or it's got to be a Dunbarton entity. It's no outside of town thing. I think when you look at these policy uses that are from some of these other towns, like even Ware has one, it's $50 use when you use their town hall for a bridal shower, let's say. Um, but our use is our town entities, and what I thought we would do is start out without charging anything, and whereas if we see somebody abuse it, we bring them to the forefront and make them, you know, pay for it at that time. But by taking a deposit from everybody and recite, you know, or giving it back or keeping a deposit on file for like a, um, somebody that wants to use it once a month, I just think it creates a lot of work for the girls up front when they have them or don't have them or do they give them back or not give them back and they give us a check and we give them their check back 
or we give them a time check back. It just creates a lot of work for these guys where, you know, the cleaning of that entryway is going to be done weekly, just like this building gets cleaned. We don't charge somebody to walk in this door and come up to your counter room. You know, that cleaning is part of, our, it's a town building now, so we have to clean it. It's part of our maintenance on the, on the overall building. And so, if somebody abuses it, we're going to know because we're going to have a key code of who's going in that building on whatever date. And so we're going to know if somebody is abusing that. Um, and then I think we can, you know, pull them into the next selectman's meeting and hash it out with me. They're going to pay the next time they use the building or they're not going to be allowed to use it anymore. Um, and that's why I want the power to stay in Lean's office on who used that building, not be part of the library or anything else, because we have control of that building. And, uh, well, I don't think that's an issue. I think that's a given that we're going to keep it yeah. on yeah. So that's where I'm coming from. Because the townspeople have paid for that building through their taxes. And they have the right, I think, to use it, and it's all done by entities. And I think when we go outside of town, if something someday happens in there, but the thing is, they're doing something from a, from a patron behavior policy. All we're doing is asking them: is you, you're going to let you use that building free? If you mess it up, you're not going to get your deposit back. If you do, if you follow the rules which you're going to implement, like room sweep, take out you take out trash, you bring in, take it out, leave the lights off, leave it relatively clean, and stuff, whatever. You gotta get your money back, so you use it free, which is in the spirit of what you're saying. I'm not saying that non-refundable deposits. I'm saying you hold the deposit for them. So in the event that um, there's a problem up there, well, you know, you can invite someone to this meeting, and they may we may never see them come in. They may you know be him and on, but when you have a hundred dollar deposit, well, thank you very much. You left the room so poor, you're not getting it. We document it with pictures, or whatever. Lean gets to put that in the general treasury. I just feel like you, you take care of it, no problem, it's free to you. If you abuse it, it's going to be a penalty for the pay. Dustin? I'm just trying to think about the deposit here because even if you have someone put a deposit, say it's either $50 or $100, is that even going to pay? Is that going to be enough of a it's, consequence it's, it's, for something? It's, it's called a little skin in the game. I understand. If, if it means so much that I don't care about their trash and leave four, three barrels or three bags of trash up there, and we have to take them out. And we, they know the policy, they got it well delineated in front of them, and they decide, I'm not touching that, that's their problem. Hey, if it's $100 to you to take out three bags of trash, that's so be it. We'll take care of it. You just lost $100. Oh, you want to use it again? We, we, we can uh, say yay, nay, you didn't even we charge you that $100. The thing is, uh, I think fifty dollars is too small. I think hundred dollars is enough of a deposit, for, and we can address it. I, I think this should, uh, if we develop this policy. It's a living document. Let's say one year we say, what are we even collecting this policy money for? The townspeople are perfect. They leave this place pristine. Well, maybe we drop it after a year. We revisit and say drop it after a year. We but could that, also do it the other way. And just but it's, it's let hard. them use it, and if it doesn't work out, then we implement that. Right, but it's, it's, it's much harder to implement asking for money after been using it free all year, and then now we're asking for money. Sir, it's not her, we just have lean and charge her. <laughs> I, I know, I'd rather, I'm, I'd rather just be a little cautious and preserve. In other words, uh, I, I mean, the walls look great, the, the entryway looks great. I just have, hate to have it get all screwed up. It's a town building that can still be used. I don't know. Oh, I know, but the thing is, uh, it's. I don't want to see it get ruined either. Believe me, I got a lot of time over there. Right. You know, it was, it's the same thing, like uh, someone said uh, to me the other day, someone in this meeting. Said, oh, the elevator, we can use an elevator as a freight elevator. I said, wrong answer. It is not going to be used as a freight elevator. The only reason we put that elevator is there one purpose for a handicapped individual to make to get up to the second floor. That's the only purpose, reason why we couldn't use it for food was because we had no handicapped access. And all of a sudden they want to use it for freight? No way. It's going to be used, it's only going to hold two people, and it's going to be used for handicapped individuals. And, we're going to, and I think we came to a consensus that it's going to have a handicapped sign on it. And I don't want the, like, Let's say a, a youth position gets to use it, and there's two adults here, and the two adults are doing, conducting their meeting or just getting set up for the meeting, and then you have little kids going up and down the elevator all day while, before the meeting starts. And then the elevator breaks, what happens? That means it's shut down for the rest of the community for three months while it get, gets repaired. I did, um, I did check with the state um, okay. elevator inspector committee on yeah. signage. I said, does anybody put signage on their handicap only or anything like that? Yeah. Some places do, although I will tell you, he says, that elevator 
is an element or it's a rule of limited, um, right. limited use or, right. or whatever because of the number of trips that they plan to have. But he said it's a full elevator. It's not a handicap only elevator. He says it is an elevator. Uh, 1,400 pounds is max weight. They tested it for that weight today. Right. Um, he said so. As far as the state goes, that is an elevator for general use, not just. Right. But the thing is, I, I view it as an investment, though. The thing is, um, the only thing that precluded us from using that building before was not having handicap access. And once that goes away, for whatever reason, it shuts down the building again. I didn't have to not only because I don't think as long as you have the facilities, you know, whether it's up for repair or whatever, I don't think it stops the use at that time. Like, I don't really think so. You don't see any building that you have a public building or something's broken, they stop the use of the building. Yeah, but I had a one handicapped person complain to us that I didn't could attend the meeting because I couldn't get up the staircase and I was stuck there. And then we have an a lawsuit against the town. Just so you people are aware, the elevator does not operate during a fire. The stairs are the means of egress. So. Mm -hmm. You should have signs on that that say that. Okay. Sign is okay. All but elevators and elevators. Right. I'm not going to ask for a decision on it tonight, but the thing is I want you to think about it. Just and reflect upon the, the, the fees. Um, I think we have to come to a consensus sooner than later. Probably next meeting I have a, uh, a decision to Can I just give it a Absolutely. Thing? I think that the community and uh, members, the committees that are involved in the town on a day-to-day -day basis will be conscientious of using that space. It's when we use it for that baby shower or the And those just are, people. they're not allowed yet. And, you know, so I but, don't know that we're going to... But the thing is, I, I like to point out that that draft of the use policy came back, came from the uh, renovation, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, renovation committee. So I, I, I put a little respect on their opinion too, so that's a public input right there. And we're actually cutting it back a little bit based on their recommendation. Can I also say that by your recommendation, uh, the ones that have the reoccurring meetings, like once a month, they're gonna check with us, they're gonna look at our calendar, it's open, they wanna have a meeting, they're gonna be going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out every month and we'll be handling a deposit return. I know we had talked about you holding the check if that if that was the case of the prior. Right. Where you going to save? Right. You're holding one day. Where are they? It's yeah. just a. The, the whole point is that it really has to be some thought put into the fees. <clears throat> Whereas if it's a regular group garden club, you have an email in there that they're looking for once a month for the eight months. I don't want to have to have my office say I'm going to give you your check back. I'd rather hold the check, put it in the bank. And then if we have one month, three months from now that it needs cleaning, I have a deposit for that group. Um, we're okay. still trying to iron out right. the whole managing of these yeah. funds. Yeah. 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 Take some comment from the public? Please. Okay. Absolutely. I agree with Dave. I think we ought to go for a year or something and see how it goes. I, I know what you're saying, Mike, and it's not a bad idea. Something does happen. You're almost going to have to have someone go up and police it after every activity, because yes. you know human nature is. Well, we didn't do that. The group before us did. And you know, I'm not talking. Yeah, if it's something serious, and I think you're going to have to just absorb it in the budget. There's going to be incidental cleaning that has to be done. People are going to have oh, urine on their feet when they go up there. Absolutely. And, and you can have carry in, carry out. They have it everywhere. But there's still going to be a soda bottle or a plastic water bottle left on the windowsill. Because somebody's going to forget it. Just leave. Not, not intentionally. And some of it is intentionally. But I think we're dealing with our own residents, and they're going to be pretty respectful of that. Okay. I think when we go out to the auto, auto, auto sector, whether it's town of town people or the wedding shower people or the birthday party or and something, if we get to that. Yeah, if you ever yeah. have to that, I, 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 I would be on board with doing a something yeah. when we get to that. Well, I, I think you just yeah, gotta bite the bullet on the incidental okay. cleaning yeah. and maybe figuring your budget. I feel we have, I'm gonna use the transfer station because this is the biggest one. We have a lot of people at the transfer station to get rid of stuff. We got a budget to throw our trash away and then we have to give another fee to throw our stuff away and I see it go in the dumpster. If it didn't go in the dumpster,
dumpster, I wouldn't get quite as wound up. But when I see it go in the dumpster, it's like I'm already paying to get rid of that. So that irritates We have a policy at Highway Club. We get a lot of calls from residents. Can I get some sand? I tell them, yes, you can. You pay for the sand. If you want to come get some sand, you can get it. And I look at it the same way as a lot of these other ones. The taxpayers pay for it. Okay. And I just hate, I hate to fee everybody. All the time. It on the side of the road. It's almost to me like a slap in the face after they yeah. approved it as part of, okay, we're going to go along with this budget, let's get this with other people, and then you want to fan to death, because you go to, to the, to the yeah. when you use that building over there, is it the school building? Yeah. There's no fees associated with that, there's a lot of... But we can't use it anymore. No, I'm just saying. It's not available anymore. I'm just saying, well, yeah. there's no fee there, you know, they just have yeah. the custodians come in and clean up, that's their job, you know. But I just... I just, I, 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 I turn into a, I'm just going to say this, like a be happy thing. Okay. And it's like, come on, man, you know, it's the, it's the town building, the town funded it, and right now. And we are restricting it to only town residents. Yes. I well, I think that. that's their skin in the game, if you ask me. I give our residents more credit. Okay. They're going to be abusive. I say try it, see how it goes. If you find there's a problem, like Dave said, you can always implement it down the road. And it's normal wear and tear. Yeah. yeah. Comments? Yeah. Any more comments? Well, you know, I'll just, I'm going to go back to the community center. They had no fees. Then they went to a $100 fee because it was being abused. And then you got a, uh, an amount that the town kicked in for the use of the cafeteria side because people were abusing it. And that's why we started throwing in $1,000 every year, which isn't that much. But I'm just, so when you're deliberating what you're going to do, there are people that were on the side of let anybody that's in town, any town organization, use that at no cost. And then they kind of decided that maybe they should put a deposit now in the event that something did happen. And one other person said to me, well, if something happens, they can't use it anymore. Well, one person out of an organization can cost the organization the opportunity to use it. And there's another thing that you're going to be held accountable for. While it passed at a town meeting, it's not everybody in town that wanted to see that happen. So now that they see it happen, if if the cleaning and the stuff gets out of control, you're going to be held accountable by those people that say, see, this is costing us more money. So I'm just throwing I just throw these things, this, this stuff out there for you to consider when you're trying to deliberate what you're going to do. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's going to be like an amoeba for the first couple of years. It's going to move all over the place. You'll have to uh, keep an eye on what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think uh, any document, any policy will come up well, may change six months from now. I also have... think it's good to have some rules sometimes. Yep. Because if you don't, as Jeff just said now, it's human nature to do whatever you can get away with. There is a two page rule. Even if you have yeah, some rules, are made to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is two page rules. Yeah, yeah I, we're, we're coming up with some uh, rules. Like right. the, the elevator was my concern. That, to me, um, uh, I, I can deal with cleaning, but I can't deal. That elevator took so long to get and so long to get inspected. <laughs> and I just, well, I hate to have it spoiled for. And again, if, well, you, if, you, if you notice that it's being. I don't want to say abused, but yeah. used improperly. Yeah. yeah. Then maybe you can put a sign up and say off limits. Right. I did. Uh, I did ask the state. I said, and uh, the elevator guy said, you know, one of our concerns Mike had brought up is, you know, kids going upstairs. If they come to the library, go up there. Well, they are being watched by people as well. But if the kids load up, he says, I'm going to tell you one thing. They might think it's fun once. When that elevator goes so slow, they're going to use yeah, the stairs. <laughs> He said they might try it once, but they're going to get out of that thing. <laughs> okay. Um, just for, just for okay. One. If you did have a, a refundable deposit, I don't think that's out of the realm. Because if people are doing the right thing, they're going to get it back. And whether it's a garden club or a historical society, is if they put a deposit down, they can say, can, can, we're going to be using it, so leave it there until you need it. And then if something happens, let us know. Because then you can assess if there is going to be a problem. Right. But believe, those two organizations, believe it or not, 
Those are probably two I'm not worried about. <laughs> As an example, I know, I know you. Yeah. This example, yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't know who's going to use it, sure. but if, you know, if they carry and carry out, that's fine. And yeah. it doesn't make you, you don't have to charge them, but at least yeah. well, if they, something does happen, it could just, it could simply be somebody broke one of the latches to the door or whatever. I, I, Dave, I, 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 I could concur with that. No, no user fee at all initially. But then let's say they, they leave it trashed. Well, if you want to use it again, you're going to have to put a deposit down. In other words, deposit right. to be determined if, if needed. Yeah. Because we have an irresponsible organization. They I, may, maybe we could. I don't go that route. Yeah. Or, or like just uh, run of the year and then if we decide there's an issue. But I agree with you, you got to can't just say, go use it, go use it. Oh, yeah. Somebody, I don't know who that individual, lucky individual is going to be, Liam. Go up and get both walk through the building. You know, just going to delegate, right? I told you. You know what I mean? It's just. three days a week. Well, we're working on that. Someone uses it Saturday night, you can't inspect it until the Wednesday. I'm sure you guys are smart enough to work that out in your department. Well, I do. I think that's. I think that's just much of a key thing is what you're talking about. Yeah. Someone has to, I wouldn't say babysit for lack of a better term. Initially. Yeah, to see how it goes and feel it out. And it, you know, maybe we're overthinking. Yeah. Yeah. True. But I think it's, believe me, nothing happens over there without my inspector. Uh, I think we should post a checklist of yeah, things, exactly. like things that need to be done. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to make definite, definite, yeah. hmm? yeah, definite rules. Yeah, definite rules. Yeah, yeah, rules and a checklist. Like, and the, Person using it can fill that out and give it to the town. And I think, put it in their mailbox. I think whoever fills it out should sign it. Right, absolutely. Right. Whatever that organization yeah, is represented. I have, I have one other idea. And since we're talking about this, I'm going to run it by the group. Yeah. My thought is so it's not up to link. First time users come in front of the board of selectmen. Garden Club comes in one time in front of us. We give them the permission to use the room. It's the rules and regulations. We want you to read them. And so, yeah. hold your, so it's not all on you. First time users. Whether um, You know, it's funny you say that, but when we did the videotaping, we had people sign waivers. In this case here, you could have them sign this policy. That's what, they sign off on it. That's a, copy the chair, co-chair, so the first time user. Yeah. Say it's a boys club. They come in to see you. We'd like to do the town hall. Okay, first time users have to go to select them. Then we can hit them up with the policy and have them sign it right then. And I don't think we need to go that extent. Just Especially if we're, doing, people in the if we're doing every other week in the summertime, you guys aren't going to be around to go to that. But we're talking about one time. one time. I'm talking about first time users right. only. But what I want to do, though, is when we develop this policy, if we have a checklist, the whole office is going up there to inspect it. We're all going to get the same training. We're all going to hear the same thing from the selectmen. Yep. And everyone's going to understand what is expected and what they're looking for so that, you know, someone's not going in there and saying, well, I missed this or... Okay. Just I, I, I like the idea of a checklist. I like the idea of uh, the policies bullet eyes form and not hidden in a paragraph. So it's a very good one. Posted by the door when they walk out. Right. Yeah. I mean, before you leave, part of the building's not as easy as it used to be either, and I'll walk you guys through that. But, yeah. you know, the lighting, different lights need to be off and different lights need to be on. Yeah. Some stay on all the time. So, okay. I'll walk you guys all through that. Okay. Uh, but as far as the policy, I think uh, I want you to do your homework, look at the draft policy, come up with some anything that's missing, then we can bulletize it and give it to Liam to develop it. I have to get it done in two weeks. And you should send me your ideas so I can put them in a draft. Right. I mean, if you like what's there, we're not going any further than what we already have. Right. We take some yeah, things. Just have to rearrange. Rearrange some things. Yeah. On one of these, it says that that's going to be on the town website to get on there, so you got to take that out. Right, we're not doing reservations, we're going to be in person. No. Uh, the, I like the idea of first user, too, that's something to consider. Yeah. Other thing, right. one time, go ahead. In all this survey, what's the day completion? We are almost there. Mm -hmm. What are we waiting on now? The you, you guys, you you guys want to go into it now or later when we're supposed to? Say again? You want to go into it now, or you want to go into it? Uh, well, we're, we're not on the, we're done on the, we're done on the policy. We, we just got homework on the policy. But I think, in fairness, uh, since uh, since we're talking about the library, let's talk about it now. Okay. Um, I told the um, guys.
news for the elevator up the hill, Mills Hill, one of the trucks was stuck mm -hmm. on our storm bay on town medium. Um, I met one of them there at seven, and the other one was stuck on the hill. We finally got him up the hill. The state inspector made it between eight and eight thirty, I think. And we loaded all their equipment in there, loaded the fourteen hundred pounds in for the test, got all ready to go, and uh, we lost power. So that <laughs> made me schedule. So I rescheduled to Thursday, which is today. Come up here again in the morning and uh, got all set up, got loaded, did all their tests, all their functions. And um, I was going to ask the board later on, but I'll ask them now. Pro Technologies is the company we chose to go to for the elevator monitoring. And we did that because Pro Technologies does all of our other buildings here. The elevator company told me it would take two months to get this work through. Um, so I started on it a couple months ago working with Pro Technologies and going through it. And uh, come to find out today, they are trying to work through it, but the elevator code now requires um, video monitor as well as phone. So if somebody is having a heart attack, they can see them in the elevator. If somebody is hearing impaired, they can see them in there and a screen will come up. Well, what I found out is um, they are sending, Pro Technologies is using another company that monitors. And we called there. Everything was through. We got the flooring passed. Everything with the state inspection is perfect. We could not call that company up and consecutively have somebody on the other end tell us that they can see us. And you can pull the smart view up so we know it's working. So. It's something that they want to do in the future, I think, but I think the uh, stakeholders of the company want it to happen, and they haven't explained it to any worker. So we have the emergency call go in. We state it's not an emergency. We're here with the state elevator inspector. We're going to check out the functions, and they're supposed to be able to tell you the address of the place, see it up on the screen, ask you, you know, if you need help or what services you need, and they couldn't get us up on the screen. We tried four different times. I placed probably 50 phone calls into the three different companies that need to go through. And I've been doing this now steadily for the last two weeks. And is it that the firewall the thing you're thinking? Or is it no, it has else? nothing to do. All those firewalls that the IT guy thought we needed aren't anything that has okay. anything to do with it. Okay. He doesn't have to open up any ports or firewalls. Thank it's you. just like looking on the internet. So that part was all easy. And we know because you can pull it up on Smart View and you can look at us in the elevator. So we know that everything is working. It's the company and then train their employees and our account for the number hasn't been set up properly. They gave me two companies that do it day in and day out when we did the elevator and I stayed with Pro Technologies and like I said, the rest of our town buildings. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to go to the other companies. It okay. can be done like that. And uh, When can we get a reinspection? He said, I think they'll come next Thursday. Oh, good, good. So I, we need to act quickly then. Yeah. So I was going to ask the other board members to make that move for him. You're You'll get a separate bill, but it's just another yeah. monitoring company. Yeah. The okay. monitoring is very, uh, it's only for emergency use. I think our other neighbor charged $331 a year or something. It's minimal, but we're trying to use a company that has untrained personnel. Mm -hmm. And the state inspector said, even if they answered it once or four times, and gotten all the information. He said, I wouldn't feel comfortable that somebody could have a heart attack in there. And I signed off on this. So if he doesn't feel comfortable with the company, I said, we need to get the alarm. I think so too, yeah. I can really So they gave us a central alarm to see other company. And now they're going to let you know. I have the name and number for the contact there. You want to do that for all yeah. the yeah. 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 So that being said, um, Chacoin cleaned that building last weekend. Spotless. Not that it's spotless now because all the elevator guys and stuff have been through there, but it was all cleaned up and spotless. I inspected it after it was all very nicely done. Uh, that being said, we need to take over the, um, the cleaning of that entryway, even while, you know, some elevator inspectors and some people will be in and out of it. The painters upstairs have nothing to do with the addition part of it, so. Um, That's all right. So we need to take over in that cleaning and start that up so we're cleaning it regular. We need to contact the, uh, the company we encounter. 
That's what, that's what I would do in the, what I would do is clean in for the foyer weekly, like we do here, you know, once a week go in there. And um, I think the room cleaning could probably just be, you know, wiped down with those things once a week as well. That's going to be like three sections of box each. Well, this is 150. This is a lot bigger here. We could try and do it every two weeks on the big room. So I'll ask them what it will cost. And let, let them yeah. figure they're going to need to walk over there and see. Yeah. yeah. I do know one thing. It's a, it's a different building. If this, look, this has some vacuuming. Mm -hmm. Because that's tile, it almost needs to be like a wet swiffer. Damp, damp. damp mop. And then the stairs are rubber mats, so those need to be hand mopped or, you know, mopped like that. And the floor on top is that. Uh, laminate CVT there, so that needs to be mopped up. So the only um, vacuuming will be the drop rugs and then the carpet in the elevator. The bathrooms are both tile. So it's going to take a little longer, I think, than this building maybe, only because there's two bathrooms in there. This only has one. And then it's more mopping, and it's going to be dried up after we can do the boiler and the trap up working. So, you know, like those switches that just pull them down or something. Will be or just in general do what they have no do the foyer with the bathrooms yeah once a week and then do it every two weeks on the big room just start right. wiping down the floor well how much would they and then how all the cars for the big room is, is we need all the cars in other words if we need once a week we need once a week depending upon how, how much activity they would have okay yeah I, you have to have access to make sure she has she doesn't need access to sit here and walk it through We're using the keypads are for going in upstairs to the room and into Mary's. Oh, that's where the keypads are. So even if they can't access with the master key to the you still need the keypad. You still a code to get. That's how you're gonna know who's using the room. going to be operational? Just the entryway or is the whole facility going to be operational? What do you mean by that? Is the upstairs completely done as far as... Oh, no, I didn't finish. Okay. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> No, we got to head it into a different direction. Okay. Okay. And it's just that addition is going to be usable, I should say. Yep, so the addition is done. There were two plates on the front entry door that came in today. Yep. Um, Bobby Schneider from Chicago has been notified. I believe he's scheduled to come on Monday. Two no plates? So those, um, those are there. I'll do another inspection with the um, architect probably next week, and she'll say they're going to touch up this paint and that, and yeah. touch up the rails. Will the manager, will the Mr. Coins manager be there with that? Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, so after the, they'll give us a substantial completion report from the uh, architect, and then we'll ready to use. Now, Mary's is already, as we know, yeah. And she's going to let you know what day probably next week we'll move her box. Okay. And um, so just go to when with it. And then the upstairs has all been drywalled, taped, sanded, primed, and now has been painted one coat. I imagine tomorrow they'll finish the second coat. So that's part two. The ceilings, yeah, part two. And the ceilings are all done. Um, Alan Byron is up there doing some electrical. Um, but he's got that. Pretty well underway as well. He added some outlets and some lights. So the, really, the only thing that's going to be usable is you know, your entryway and stairs and the elevator. But and and Mary's, yes. Yeah, but the upstairs room won't be ready for function, functional use. Uh, the only thing we're waiting for on that is we want to have a work session, which we're going to probably put on the town, to sand the floors. Uh, instead of paying for them, um, Tom Casado wants to take in the 
But on, on the, the main area there, Jeff, I want to say within a month or so, we should be using that too. This was too risky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I mean, we waited long enough for it. And I think the mayor's been very accommodating the process. process. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I was just wondering what, yeah. what we were what we were opening up for use. Yeah. If it you, isn't much. If you recall, though, if you recall, if we go back about maybe five meetings, Mike made an estimate. April first. Yeah. It's coming. It's almost gonna make it. No, we were just almost full out. Okay. <laughs> I said April first. My prediction. The Leo has on tape. Uh, April first. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just want bragging rights. You know, I know that's fine. I just didn't know what, how the wedding upstairs. Well, I didn't want to open the upstairs to use the yeah, wedding because the chairs all be. laid out. And then I have to pick them up every time. Yeah, yeah, so, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. I understand. And the, and, the, and the cosmetic things. Some of it's like uh, some lining that's been changed. The, the, they're yeah. going to read some new chair seating yeah. in there. They're going to yeah, keep some of the old stuff that's going in. They're going to keep some of the old seating for historical purposes. Oh, besides. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, right right now, so, right now, the um, sales are paid for the stage lighting, TV. Yeah. Pull down so that's and normal. all that. So that guy's going to come in and install that right after the painting's done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so drywall and painting are done. Um, yeah, nothing to do with Sometimes the floor will be done, whether it's before the guy does the AV work or after, the floor will be sanded and sealed. Nice. We talked about not doing the flooring and trying to do a fundraiser for it, but the flooring doesn't look like it's ever been finished there. And I talked to Fred Mullen about it, and he said they used to put like some oil on it when they danced to, you know, clean it up. Yeah. So um, our thoughts are, we want to we want to do the flooring. So Tom uh, Casale come up with an idea of, uh, you know, having a work party together. He's done several floors before, and he wants to get a group of people from Glenbar together. I did get two estimates on the floor. One was nineteen nine, and one was um, twelve thousand. What was nineteen nine? Nineteen hundred. Nineteen thousand. <laughs> uh, what so was the chairs that you were talking about? Did they have any chairs? Because I was doing chairs. Well, if they had excess money, they were going to do chairs and table. I don't believe there'll be any extra from what I've seen. Really? Well, when they paid for the drywall. They're having um, paint. Alan Byron do that. They did pay for the paint. Yeah. And then 36000 is going to the sound system and AV and lighting. Um, so there's not going to be a lot left. Might be a little bit for some drapes or something, but there's not going to be a lot left. So that's why the floor issue. I brought it to the whole board there, met with them. These are the prices we have. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? They, I think they might want to do a fundraiser on some things in the future. Yeah, I said a comment. Everybody loved that event, even if it was for. Yeah, we've been, we've been. And now they can, you know, legally go up to the second floor and look at it. Mm -hmm. But, so. Okay, anything else? Okay. So, I, the Leo's question is still like maybe 30 to 60 days out. But as far as Mary in the library, to move. But as far as Mary in the library, uh, I think next week sometime we'll yeah. have enough workers out of that entrance that yeah. they can enter through there and because she can can use her facility. People yes. can enter that foyer and go upstairs, but if the upstairs is locked, they can't go any further. Right. And they have to come back down. So on the other one, yes. And there's nothing in the room for them to get hurt on either, so mm -hmm. I mean, they could go in there. But, um, the white trick will have light up there. Answer your question, sir. Yeah, do one more. Give or take, yeah. Okay. So that's at the top meeting, I gave them a soft opening with Mary next week. Yeah, well, cool. That's cool. Okay, let's go uh, continue on, Joe. Let's talk about the mailbox items. I got a thank you note sent to the town from the uh, Congregational Church. If you recall, we gave them uh, uh, some dollars to help with their uh, food bank, I believe it was. Outreach out of our welfare line, if you remember that. Yeah. We got a thank you from them. I have a uh, Sucko would like to have a point now. Glory Lulo and to the uh, Recreation Committee, which I think they're on a good 
start. Town clerk will have the appointment papers next week. I don't know who Lori Rode the room is. Do you know? Okay. I have no problem with that. I hope you know just a little bit about her before uh, what we can find out next week. Maybe she, when she comes in to be sworn in, we'll go over it with and we'll find out what it's all about. But uh, who is she? Comes with a recommendation from the chair. Okay, and then we have a George Duke. Yeah, sorry. George, we have an email from George Duke concerning the uh, traffic circle on the Yellow Flash Line around 1377. Um, I, could you respond to it, Elaine? That the thing is that we don't, the town does not necessarily control that intersection, it's controlled by the state of New Hampshire. I did explain okay. that, but I said the person that he had some recommendations to add to in the area on the if they walk about when it's. But I think it's the final decision will be done by safety experts at the state level. Yep. More than a 10-year plan. Exactly. In fact, we're not near the bottom. I think we're near the top, I believe. Somewhere. Always. Oh, but you have us in the queue. So yes. Well, the thing is, uh, as, as I was uh, being a little bit about it, mm -hmm. what would bring us to the top? A few more fatalities. A few fatalities here. But I don't wish that upon anybody. But the thing is, that in other words, if any other intersection on the list has a more safety concern, where it be life, we would change the order of things being done, which would be appropriately so. And that's the state's call, not our call. Some of those things were brought up already at, this, at, at our level when we met with the state. And, uh, and one of the biggest things is, is, you, is you're going up the hill and it's icy and there's a rotary at the top. I mean, you got to stop and solve for the rotary and then you slide backwards. So the state's going to have to look at that. So I agree with them. Just remember that you change your 10 year plan every two years <laughs> in the House Public Works Committee. Okay. Something to change. Something to change. Uh, oh, I didn't understand this was just from a resident. Yes. That's just a point. It's the state. No, no, no. The, the, state, the state's got, uh, they're, oh, in, they're in the driver's seat here, as you might say, correct? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you want to respond to that, but a full study has been done on that. And I told them the state control, it's not um, the town. And we, we had a, a request for uh, some reservations for the uh, use of the town hall, and uh, I would recommend that we take no reservations until it is complete. Okay. Agree, Justin? You have consensus yes. there? No reservations. Because I think uh, this group is number two. The first group is the board. The board's not somebody to attack us with a day. I think request. the garden club approaches before the board club one other time. Okay, couple comment. I'll start the back row. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I already made my comment. Okay. okay. So noted. Sure. I just want to give you a little update about a, a road situation. This week, Monday, I went over to the town. I think we went to a, a meeting. We had a yes. Meeting. In regards to the notice we got of uh, a possible extension of yeah, time. Petition to do some work in.
history of Vermont to know how that deal work was. And I said, we stalked about a, and I bet it was 150 feet from the property line. And uh, you know, we had it's not paved, you know, that we turn around basically a two people's driveway to push into it. He did access turnaround. And our paperwork was on that. And I said, we had at this point in time we have no reason or need to maintain it through the dot line. So they have to wrangle with that. Their side of it was just a informational meeting to gather information. They weren't going to make a decision that night. They were just going to monitor it. And I just asked them to keep us you know, in the loop and because they would uh, I just want to make sure that you guys are in. Depending how that works out, if it gains any traction and they move forward with it, we may have to talk about it amongst ourselves or them or whatever. But I indicated there was no need for us to do it. And uh, so that, that may be a situation that arises. But it's just an we'll see. Uh, I guess at the end of the day, this guy wants to subdivide his land. His, uh, their public works guy gave up an estimate of like $700,000 for these roads. For the road. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't see the paperwork on exactly what they gave up the $700,000, but that was just some numbers that were thrown out. Now, in the event of cooperation, we would request money to upgrade our road. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're going to have to see how it plays out. It okay. may be just it might die on the body. If it goes forward, we'll have to probably meet with them and come up with some sort of arrangement. Yeah. And but again, what are you, 150 feet turn? So as soon as we're down, we'll open yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, the residents that I heard at the meeting weren't in favor of the long road. They were they weren't interested in seeing it. Well, it's a through road. It would be a through way. It might be, we're the ones that would get hurt. All the residents on the walk I mean, I'm sure they were. It's like when you did my, my road, what I live on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I mean, it just, it, they're both class, the ones I mean, class, one's short class of those people. You can yeah. still use it now if it's passable. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think years ago, a lot of people did, but that's kind of. But as a, I mean, if you plow that, you can actually plow the snow and leave it right there. Like we do now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. It's been a topic. I don't know how far I'll go with it. Okay. Well, you mentioned Thank you. the property line. That's actually the town line. No, it's, it's town line. Town line. It's town line. Yeah. And that's 150 feet. Thank that's you for representing us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's find a way to make sure that. Can we learn about the Senate Gracious? They have nice seats in their meetings. <laughs> cushion, just cushion, nice cushion. Seat. Yeah, just cushion seats. And you sit in your own seat. Kind of I have a cushion seat. Who's on the screen? 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I saw the fire chief out there like four times he plowed that, that uh, driveway. It was pretty good, the chief yeah. fire chief. And he was there for the meeting. Of course, hey, we're all saying we leave. We don't have to speak to the chief because we have backup speakers. Then he gets pulled out on a call. Radio start. So you walk out, you have to attend the sun. Yeah, it's just the box. So. <laughs> Woody Tibbs, Woody, 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 but it was, uh, as I said, it was uh, nothing terribly controversial. Sounds like you guys are doing the kid job. Yeah. yeah. We read it through. Yeah. Well, and we get get out of it. We got before midnight, which is a record. Did you not want to come 100 feet in Dallas? We had, <laughs> we had Joe Millian was there. Oh, okay. We were talking about the floating stretcher twice. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we threw some humor out there. I think mean, it was good. I'll leave it at that. I was getting ready to run in case I had to do guys getting on in my case. Michael's sandwich? It was going to be sandwich. It's going to be on YouTube? So we can... it's a, I don't know if it is. No. Well, you want me to repeat it for the record? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, gentlemen, I'm waiting. I have nothing else for the group except uh, will you get your homework cut out for next week? In fact, if you've got any hot gift to leave, 
Email for next week, please. Motion to adjourn. All sides, Council.